peace, infinite waters, diving deep once again. We're here in nature, breathing in that beautiful chi, the birds singing above. Five health tips to decalcify your pineal gland. Uh-oh, what is the pineal gland? Scientists call this that pine shaped cone in the middle of your brain the gland responsible for producing melatonin regulating our sleep and wake cycles there are seven glands within the body i see the glands as the chakras the seven glands to watch out for the pineal gland the pituitary gland the thyroid gland the thymus gland the adrenal glands, the pancreas glands, and the reproductive glands. Now, what I found along my journey is that once you have all of these glands functioning to their optimum capability, then you can activate the pineal gland to a greater degree. The ancients saw that once you let go of your perceived reality, you are able to see beyond reality. That is why if you cut the pineal gland, it resembles the same rods and cones found in the retina of the eye. So what we all have to see, and what I'm learning more about on my journey, is that to be able to see, there are so many levels to develop our vision. And the first tip is, eating more organic plant-based foods. What's freed me along my journey, I always say, my life has not been the same since 2006. And this is where I made the big decision to let go of consuming meats, dairy, which produce a lot of cholesterol, and really took my health more seriously because health is wealth and when we see that once we have a greater circulation of blood around the body once our cells are more oxygenated this impacts every gland within our body to a higher extent letting go of fluorinated water tap water and what I've found is that just by drinking more mountain spring water, it frees you because it doesn't have fluoride. It's got the healthy calcium fluoride, which we need to increase our frequency. Because many of the foods are keeping us in a low vibration. They are affecting the biochemistry within our body. Therefore, that's why in my early journey, I was walking around like a half zombie. And the moment I started to incorporate more alkaline foods within my diet, it took me to a whole nother level. It made me realize that anything is possible. The second tip which has helped me along my journey is five minutes every day. What is five minutes every day? This is where I take time to go back into nature, to plant my feet, to move more into my body, lose your mind and come to your senses. Osho said, no meditation, no life. No meditation, no life. And for me, I always feel that once you can take time to be alone, you are reconnecting back to your authentic self. You are piercing the veil of illusion and you are letting go of society's expectations. Because many of our lives, my early journey was bombarded with rushing around the place, worrying, anxiety. And when you can just take time when you can take the time to reconnect back to your body, like I always say, the body is the subconscious mind. 
And seeing that every single energetic signature is stored within the body, the moment we become our bodies, we free ourselves. For me, daily meditation is just being in nature, listening to the sound of nature. We have to ask ourselves, what are the sounds like in our immediate environment? Because we become our environment. That's what I've noticed. That's why I'm even becoming more aware of what type of music I'm listening to. I stay on the 432 hertz frequency, not the 440 hertz frequency. Because once we see that sound can be used to manipulate matter, cymatics. <laughs> the third tip is all about changing your thoughts to change your world. I always say it's all a mindset. Change your thoughts to change your world. On a deeper level, I've just seen the attitude we take affects the blood chemistry within our body. And lately, I've been talking a lot about neuroplasticity. Aristotle said, excellence is not an act, but a habit. And the more and more I use that to empower me, to realize that yes, what are the actions making up our daily routine? And how are they serving us to become the greatest version of ourselves on a deeper level? Because if we're not doing what we love, then how can we begin to activate our glands to their full capacity? I've noticed that right now there are so many films coming out about the right and left brain hemisphere connection, where we activate the whole brain functioning. Because deep down, I know that we can all be so much more. No, we don't have to become robots. We have this innate gift to become super powerful, which we already are. But it all starts with how we are thinking, removing limiting belief systems. And for me, I've realized a secret that you tap into the realm of infinite creation when you let go of perfection because letting go of perfection is where perfection begins. And along my journey is just about accepting myself because if we see that the high stress levels are producing cortisol <laughs> in the body. So therefore, the more you can accept yourself and say, I am good enough, you reduce the stress levels within your body so if you have a perfectly functioning adrenal gland, then this impacts your pineal gland because all the glands are interconnected. We have to become the source of our own happiness. Therefore, we have to start changing how we see ourselves. More so, we have to start letting go of who we think we are to become who we are. And Going back to melatonin, in terms of just activating our pineal gland, is looking at the foods we are eating. Foods that contain a lot of melatonin are bananas. But also we have to look at the magnesium and the calcium because these help get rid of the fluoride because the fluoride increases the hardness in the interior of the walls of the pineal gland. So pineapples are very high in magnesium. And then we see the link, pine, <laughs> pine shaped cone, pineapples, also cherries, figs, avocados. So it's amazing when you see that just by changing your thoughts, it impacts your whole lifestyle because once you change one area of your life, everything falls into place. Once I started to love myself more, the magic started to happen. I took more pride in what I was eating. I bought plane tickets to a beautiful sunset island because I realized that being free is our birthright. Number four is all about 
accepting yourself 100%. Because I just love walking around and seeing people in their true element because I always have known that you love yourself by going to the place you find your greatest power. And the moment you begin to develop that self-love, you can extend out your love to other people. But wait a minute, when you don't love yourself, when you have negative thoughts about yourself, now you are affecting the psycho neuro immunology of your body. And this is how the psychology affects the immune system. And that is why people who love themselves, they're always smiling. Don't tell me not to smile. <laughs> because the world is serious enough. And the more we can just feel more free, feel calmer, this not only increases our serotonin levels and our dopamine levels, but we just have an overall increased well-being a deeper gratitude for life because what stopped me in my early journey was thinking that i never had anything to offer anybody and i tapped into the secret that it's all about the value you place on your own creation that is why are we just spectating or are we active participants in this beautiful stage, in this beautiful creation called life? Are we doing our heart's desire or are we living based on other people's expectations of us, of what our friends and family think? Because the moment we can do what we truly feel in our heart is the moment all our cells begin working for us. Dr. Bruce Lipton, the biology of belief. We have to realize the power of epigenetics, how our environment governs our cells, and all of this impacts our pineal gland in a positive way. A great book, The Biology of Belief. I'm reading his latest book, spontaneous evolution and once we can start seeing that just by letting go of the past anything holding us down and sharing ourselves with other people we will all be cooperating and forming a more harmonious world around us what's freed me along my journey because i always talk of the way of the alchemist. I always talk of the shadow side. And I've had many moments which I've called awakening moments, where we are in that chrysalis. I've been there. And what happens is you have to confront your shadow side. The secret I learned in the chrysalis to metamorphosize into the butterfly which is all of our destinations anyway, is to allow thoughts to come through us without judgment, is to allow emotions to come through us without judgment. Because the moment you are reacting to your thoughts, you are in resistance and resistance makes stronger. And what's helped me in terms of decalcifying the pineal gland is to not judge things as good or bad. It is transcending that duality which is the mirage of separation. That is why for me, I am already there. That's how I envision myself, being already there. By the time you have everything you want, certain friends and family will have gone. They will not be there to celebrate with you. So I imagine myself already having it. That is the secret to see that we are already where we desire to be. The power of imagination, the great song by John Lennon, imagine. Once we can start activating these imaginal cells, then 
we start decalcifying our pineal gland. We stop vibrating on that super high frequency. We have to ask ourselves, where are we getting most of our ideas about the world? I realized for me along my journey, it was the television, which tells lies to your vision. I'm not in resistance to the television because I just see the television for what it is, a tool. But we have to see that the history behind the tool, what has it been designed for? We have to see that once you can start to use critical thinking, once you can start to question everything, and that's why for me along my journey, I'm learning from you. I'm learning each and every day because there is always more to learn. I am an eternal student of nature. So we free ourselves when we can start to see that we have to start forming our own media. Two people in the world, producer, consumer, producer, consumer. <laughs> and once you become a producer, which I am working towards every single day, it is a beautiful feeling to see that we can start creating going back to the video I talked about in how to be unstoppable, priming our brain to affect our subconscious mind, placing images which can trigger us for a greater evolution on planet Earth. Right now, I see it's the time of the Grand Awakening. This is the time where we free ourselves from all man-made illusions because there is only universal law. We are all subject to universal law. There is a divine intelligence permeating everything in existence. And once we can align ourselves to that frequency, we become unstoppable. We become invincible. We become magnificent. Just like being in front of the sun. There are frequencies everywhere around us. Nikola Tesla said, if you want to understand the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. And becoming aware of the elf frequencies, which many of these radios are producing, televisions are producing, computers are producing, then we run back into nature. We start swimming around the ocean. You know that feeling where you just dive in and you are greeted by this warm salt water. It massages every single cell within your body. For me, all of this decalcifies the pineal gland. We have to ask ourselves, what is our mission? What is our divine purpose? Why did we come to planet Earth? And for me along my journey, I realized that I came here for expansion to continually grow and discover the deep realms of my infinite consciousness, which we are all part of, this one flow. I love how the Native Americans talked of how we are part of the web of life, but we did not weave the web of life. So we have to realize our place in the ecosystem and it's liberating for me just to see how this whole world we are living in is changing before our eyes. Living in the information age, we have to also see that information and knowledge can only take you so far. That's why I always talk of the radical action. And that is number five. Number five is all about act now or cry later. Setting ourselves these personal challenges to overcome the fears we have. And the fear is the false evidence appearing real. For me, even when I am making these videos to start with, it was fearful. And now, using that neuroplasticity, it has become second nature. So there is no fear. Why? Because there is a hundred percent acceptance of who I am. Once you accept who you are, the world will have no choice but to accept you because your mind is a projection of the world. So within as without. For me, 
this whole lifestyle of just seeing that our body is the unconscious mind. So in terms of exercising, we are producing those endorphins. We are increasing our serotonin levels. All of this is helping to decalcify the pineal gland. Yoga. I love to do this because for me, it is letting go of the past. Every stretch, every turn is showing me that I can always learn more. You can't master it. There is always more to learn. There is always more along the journey within. The true wisdom keepers know how much they don't know. So they are always in that perpetual expansion. And skating, whatever you do that brings you happiness is affecting every single molecule within your body. It's affecting the psychology of your body of how you see the world. And that is how to keep the passion alive because when you start doing what you love, you tap into that passion. What is passion? Passion is energy. Energy is currency. Currency in our society is called money. So we generate our wealth by following our passion. More so, we just have to loosen up, laugh more, have fun more, because this is not only producing the oxytocin within our body, but it is making us feel great every day, making us feel so good we don't need a reason. What's helped me along my journey is to see that once you transcend knowledge, you step into wisdom, which is the knowing. Know thyself. And the wisdom is the radical action. What determines the growth of a tree is not the information in the seed. It is the environment. The seed has a destination. Yes, but what ultimately governs how tall, how strong, how beautiful this tree will be is the environment. And that is why epigenetics is at the forefront of science. Because we have to see that once you place yourself in an environment which complements your own energy, we all start to decalcify our pineal glands. Why? Because we are resonating at a frequency which is promoting our wellness. If we're in the wrong environment, and there is no wrong in terms of it's wrong for you. It's not in resonance with your own frequency. Now we can't reach our full potential. And the one mantra I always say is that anything is possible. No limits except the ones we create. ING, decalcifying. There is a long way to go even for me along my journey, but I know I am happy because instead of complaining that I never did something, I am moving in the direction where I want to be. Be glad that you did something. Create, create, create. Get the sun because the sun gives us that melatonin and it helps decalcify the pineal gland. At the end of the day, the only thing that matters is who had the most fun. Keep smiling. Infinite waters. Diving deep once again. Stay well. Stay healthy. Peace.